Sinha is the author of several books, including the Saffron Swords series. A postgraduate in English literature from Pune University, she is an independent researcher on Indian history and ancient temples. As a blogger and editor, she has interviewed freedom fighters. She is the founder of MyIndiaMyGlory.com, a magazine that celebrates Bharat from ancient to present times, with special focus on history and heritage. Manushi Sinha will now speak on revisiting Indian chronology and survival as an ancient civilization. This session is brought to you by Indic Academy. Namaste, Bandhya Mataram. I would like to thank uh, Indic Academy and uh, Ponte Litfest uh, team for inviting me to deliver a talk on the antiquity and continuity of Bharatiya civilization. So I will address uh, two questions because I'll have to end my session in 20 minutes. So uh, number one, how old is Bharat? And number two, despite 1,300 plus years of uh, mass genocide, loot of our wealth, the, uh, plunder of uh, uh, our villages and cities and towns, and uh, destruction of our temples, how Bharat, one of the oldest of uh, our one of the oldest of our ancient civilizations, survived. So how old is Bharat? So let us consider two perspectives, uh, all, uh, both evidence-based. So number one, uh, Bharat, how old is Bharat as a civilization? So when we talk of civilization, we mean planned cities, uh, advanced societies, and uh, developments taking place in various spheres. So in this case, uh, Bharat is an advanced society as an advanced civilization, how old is Bharat in that aspect? So when we consider academic narratives, academic textbooks and uh, mainstream narratives, we generally come to know that uh, the Bharatiya civilization, civilization started at 1500 BCE. That is the Vedic era started at around 1500 BCE, which means we are just 3,500 years old. Is this uh, uh, really true? Is this statement really true? What is depicted in our uh, textbooks and in mainstream narratives and researches? Is this uh, true? It is a big no. So there are many evidences to prove this. Uh, many let us consider the latest recent excavations. For example, uh, just uh, nearly a month ago, uh, some, uh, uh, some 40 to 50 sophisticated copper weapons have been found in, uh, in uh, Uttar Pradesh that dates back to around 4,500 years old. Sophisticated copper weapons that uh, used in warfare. And then what about the Sinoli chariot that all of us know that dates back to around 4,000 to 5,000 years? And uh, what about the Rakhigari excavations that took place some, a few months back? That, led to the dis discovery of uh, civiliz civilization dating back to 3,000 to 5,000 years old. <clears throat> and uh, if 1500 BCE is the start of the Vedic era, then when did the Ramayana events take place? When did the Mahabharata events take place? So both these events have been considered as mythology by uh, the researchers and even by our own people. So considering that, so considering that, when did uh, our Indian civilization start? So uh, before that, I want I would also like to focus on the uh, universities of ancient India. The Takshashila University flourished during the last uh, from uh, during uh, 3,600 years ago. Takshashila University flourished. And then Adi Sankaracharya, Kalhana, who wrote uh, Raj Tarangini, they studied in uh, Shardapit Temple University. And then Nalanda University flourished uh, from the first, uh, from the last uh, uh, few decades of uh, the last years of BCE. So students from across the world came and studied here. 
I would like to also give an anecdote about uh, uh, his Prafulla Rai, the founder of uh, Bengal Pharmaceuticals, Bengal Chemicals and Pharmaceuticals. He, once uh, he uh, attended a, delivered a lecture in Lahore University uh, about uh, uh, chemistry. He was a chemical scientist. And while he was uh, delivering the lecture, an Englishman uh, sneered at him, and he was unimpressed. Then noticing him, uh, Prafulla Rai, he said that uh, at the time when the Englishmen were wearing hides, our ancestors were preparing formulations, chemical formulations, for healing, physically healing the people. So there have been many researches uh, on the chronology of ancient India, and uh, worth mentioning, the names worth mentioning are Nilesh Oak, uh, Vedvirarya, uh, M.L. Raja, Dr. M.L. Raja, Prafula Menthi. So Coming to a common conclusion, there is a book uh, by Sri Vedvi Rarya called The Chronology of India. It is available in three volumes. And according to this book, which is based on uh, several evidences, astronomical calculations from the epics, then inscriptions, and uh, tectonic movements, and geological studies, and various uh, evidences. Based on these various evidences, this uh, book has been written. So according to that book, the Manu era starts around 14,000 BCE. And the Vedic era starts around 11,500 BCE. And the Ramayana events took place in between 5677 to 5577 BCE. And the Mahabharata war took place around 3162 BCE. So different, uh, many different dynasties flourished. For example, the Cholas, they flourished uh, from, right from the Vedic period. And uh, some other dynasties worth mentioning are the Pandyas, Cheras, then Mauryas, Guptas, Satavahanas, the Gurjar Pratiharas, Paramaras, the Loharas. So there were many dynasties that flourished in ancient India. And evidences of uh, this advanced civilizations uh, have been corroborated by the recent uh, excavations, like uh, I've mentioned about the Rakhigari, about the Sinoli chariot. So how old is Bharat when we uh, go by archaeological excavations? So th there have been excavations over a period of uh, several decades across the country. So when we speak about the Narmada excavations around the Nar Narmada river belt, a homo erectus skull called the Narmada nensis a female skull was found by Arun Sonakia. Uh, he is a geologist. And uh, that Homo erectus skull dates back to 5 lakh to 6 lakh years. So that is found uh, in our Narmada River belt. And when you speak about the, the Jawalapuram excavations, uh, thousands of artifacts have been found there. And uh, there have been traces of uh, the Toba volcanic eruption ashes. So the Toba volcanic eruption took place in Indonesia some 70 to 75,000 75, years ago. So uh, ashes of that volcano has been found in Jalapuram. And when we speak about Vimbetka caves, there are around uh, 750 rock shelters spread across 10 kilometers in Madhya Pradesh. And uh, there is a uh, carving of Nataraja in uh, rock shelter number 10 that dates back to the Mesolithic era. When we speak about Mesolithic era in the Asian context, it dates back to, uh, the dating is uh, between, the, between 8,000 years to 20,000 years. So the Nataraja painting uh, in the rock shelter number 10 on the wall on the, uh, dates back to 8,000 years to 20,000 years. And uh, when we speak about uh, horses, we have been told that the Aryan invasion, the Aryans brought horses uh, to India. But uh, there have been several, there are several paintings of horses in the Bhimpetka caves that dates back to many thousands of years, from 3,000 to 40,000 years. And Michel Dinano has uh, also done enough research on this aspect. He, 
came across a horse. He has written a book. That book describes about horse bones uh, found in the Gujarat and Rajasthan area that, that uh, dates back to 4,000 to 5,000 years. And that is beyond the Aryan invasion time period. That is 1500 BC. That is what uh, the uh, Westerners, uh, the scholars there, give the timeline of the Aryan invasion. And then uh, not many months ago, rock shelters in, in Aravali ranges of Faridabad they recently discovered uh, rock art in the Ar Aravalli Ranges. And even I went there, I came across a uh, rock art of a, an inverted swastika. And the rock art and the uh, swastika there, the painting dates back from, say, 20,000 to 1 lakh years. And when we speak about Vimpetka caves, there have been traces of habitation, continuous habitation from the last 3,000 years to 1 lakh years. And when we talk about the Saraswati in this valley river belt uh, excavations, their uh, artifacts uh, discovered there, there date back to from date back from say 3,000 years to 9,000 years. And when you speak about adakal caves, the rock art there dates back from 2,000 to 8,000 years. And there is uh, one rock art that has a connection with the Indus Valley. Uh, findings. So that also shows the connection between the north and the south. And then we all know about the Rakhigari and the Haryana excavations. Then Kilaru, Kilari in Tamil Nadu, the excavations there uh, has led to the discovery of uh, the ancient civilization dating back to at least 3,000 years. And then there has been excavations in the Asurgar fort in Orissa. There are uh, traces of uh, tiles, tiled roads, tiled um, floors in the houses. The tiles have been found there that dates back to 2,500 to 3,000 years. And uh, most of the excavations in uh, the Saraswati Indus River Belt, in the Rakhigari, in Kilari, in Asurgar Ford has uh, led to the discovery of uh, advanced uh, water conservation techniques followed by our ancestors, water harvesting and water conservation techniques followed by our ancestors. And there have been planned drainage, planned drainage systems, roads. So all, all, of, all of these uh, examples of advanced civilizations dating from 2,000 to 9,000 years have been found in several parts of India. So that, again, uh, seems somewhat similar to the uh, timeline given by Vedbi Rari in his book, The Chronology of India. So despite 1,300 years of uh, mass genocide, loot of our temples, uh, conversion, loot of our wealth, how India, the Indian civilization, survived. So there have been, there were uh, many ancient civilizations and many of these civilizations perished uh, after uh, a few decades of invasion, but India still survived. And uh, what is the main reason? This is all because of the continuous resistance offered by the warriors of the soil, the, our warrior ancestors, both men and women, from each and every corner of the country. They won victories, they reclaimed their lands, respective kingdoms, and that's how we survived. That's how we are here, communicating. communicating. And uh, but in our academic books, we uh, the uh, victories of uh, the warriors of the soil, their uh, stories of resistance against the invaders have not been highlighted at all. So what we have read in our academic books is a distorted, one-sided distorted narrative, and all about the invaders and. Uh, even if we have read about the invaders, the atrocities they committed uh, have not been highlighted in the books. So all we know is who Kutubuddin Aibak is, who Akbar is, who Babar is. We can give a detailed description about the invaders. But when we ask about who Kapaya Nayaka is, who Raja Prithu is, who uh, Rani Bhavashankari is, so there is a list of um, thousands of our warriors who offered resistance, but no one, hardly anyone knows them. 
So I'll just give a two minutes example of uh, Bhaktiar Khil, Raja Prithu and Bhaktiar Khilji. We all know about Bhaktiar Khilji who destroyed uh, uh, Vikramshila University and Nalanda University. So according to uh, foreign records, Tibet, especially Tibetan records, Nalanda University had four multi-story libraries during that time. And there were around uh, 8,000 students and 2,000 teachers at the time when Bhaktiar Khilji attacked uh, the university. He not only uh, slaughtered all the students and the teachers, only few could escape alive, but also uh, destroyed the entire university campus, include the, including the libraries. And the manuscripts there burned for several months. And when the excavations uh, took place, uh, the archaeologists found heaps of layers of ash of the manuscripts. And uh, uh, most of us, uh, maybe if I ask uh, who Raja Prithu is, Raja Prithu defeated Bhaktiar Khilji. Raja Prithu is from Assam. Uh, Bhaktiar Khilji was on a, an expedition, military exped expedition towards the east, towards Tibet and all, but he was confronted by Raja Prithu of Assam. And uh, Raja Prithu defeated him so badly that he could no longer commit any loot or plunder after that. If, but if uh, Raja Prithu had not defeated him, then maybe he would have committed more plunders. He would have, defeat, uh, he would have destroyed more of our heritage sites. He would, he would have converted more people. And uh, about Raja Prithu, many of, uh, like, uh, all of these stories of resistance are described in two of my books, Saffron Swords, part one and part two. Part one contains the 52 episodes of Valor. Similarly, part two also contains 52 episodes of Valor. Uh, from each and every corner of Bharat, from the 8th century to 1947. So Raja Prithu, many, you, many of the, like to whoever heard about Prithu, they say that it's a fake story. But there is an inscriptional record about Raja Prithu defeating Bhaktiar Khilji. It is in Gohati. It is the Kanai Vorasi rock inscription. The inscript, inscription tells in detail about the defeat of Bhaktiar Khilji in the hands of Prithu. I would, <clears throat> I would like to thank you all for patiently listening. Thanks. Thank you.